On this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, I'm going to tell you a little bit about almost slicing off a finger. Ooh, but did you focus on the finger? I, for about 200 miles, focused on the thing. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Did you see any Transformers while you were driving? Uh, I did, in fact, and they were playing Tetris. Oh, parking lot Tetris. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 197 for Thursday, the 20th of December, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. We don't have any guests this week and, well, Ken's barely even a friend. How you doing, man? <laughs> wow! That's, that's, that's uh, news. Uh, now i got to get through an hour of this show pretending that we're still friends. Uh, I'm good, man. It's almost Christmas. Oh. Which means that Christmas is almost over. <laughs> right. No, that's there, there's the positive part. Hey, um, <laughs> have you uh, have you been playing Whampocalypse this year? Whampocalypse. Whampocalypse. Tell, tell me what Whampocalypse is. Whampocalypse is the game where you try to go as long as possible without hearing Wham's uh, last Christmas on the radio. Um, and then once you hear it, your job is to make sure everyone else hears it. So, therefore, ruining the game for them. It's kind of like the game, which I just reminded you of, so we both lose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And everyone listening just lost. Yes. Again. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not aware of Whampocalypse, and I, I think I'm doing a pretty good job winning because I haven't heard it once. Hmm. Because I, I don't usually listen to the radio. <laughs> right. No, that, that is that is one of the key aspects. But but in order to play, you have to be willing to play. So you can't just avoid all radio. You have to have some measured risk in there. And today, I heard a cover of Wham's Last Christmas. Well, first of all, you're saying Wham wrong. It's, it's Wham. <laughs> but also... <laughs> Wouldn't it really be more like Wham... I mean, there's an exclamation point at the end of their name. So, um, but second, okay, does a cover count? I don't think so. I don't think it does. I think it has to be Wham's Christmas. Otherwise, it would be Last Christmas Apocalypse, right? It wouldn't be Wham Whampocalypse. It would be Last Christmas Apocalypse. That is a very good point. So I think it has to be Wham's Last Christmas, not a cover thereof. So I think I'm still in the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and if anyone out there disagrees with us, hit us up on Twitter at yeah. Ritual Misery. Send us a voicemail of not Wham's uh, Last Christmas. <laughs> Wham! <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't much care for the song. Actually, um, I love the fact that George Michael used Wham to spread his wings and uh, become a solo artist because he had he made amazing music before he died. This is an odd qualifier. <laughs> Only the music he made before he died was good. Well, yeah. I mean, the music he's made since, <laughs> barely listenable. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good at all. <laughs> I don't care I don't, for anything he's yeah, made since. Yeah, I don't have any of it on my iPod at all. None of it. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, dude. I wouldn't know. Good stuff. Uh, man, I went to Arizona. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and... Um, I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank Squidicus for filling in for us last week to accommodate my Arizona trip and all of the craziness that you had going on. Right. Um, I believe his episode, uh, which is going to be Squid's mixtape. Beta uh, 2. Beta 2, yep. yeah. I believe that's going to be released as a Patreon exclusive. Is that right? I believe so. I haven't talked to him about it because of the, all the craziness you just mentioned. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, his shows are good. They're really good. And yeah. if you want to taste, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah. Um, anyway, Un so unfortunately, in the current incarnation, we <laughs> clearly cannot uh, blast it out to the entire world because it will be taken down on every platform. Because he does use a lot of samples. <laughs> sure. We, we I gotta, mean, by we, necessity, right? We, we got to raise some money to get him an ASCAP or whatever. Uh, <laughs> his, ASCAP? Yeah, his, his little license so he can, he can play uh, play music and stuff. Right, right. 
Yeah. So anyway, I, w- I was in Arizona. My friend Scott, who was a guest on our show like 150 episodes ago. Right. Yeah. Long time ago. Uh, yeah. So his, he and his wife celebrated their 25th anniversary and decided to do a wedding vow renewal ceremony. Oh, wow. And he chose me to be the best man for the ceremony, which was a huge honor. Uh, Scotty is one of the greatest people that I know. So it was a huge honor to go do that for him. Um, But more than that, it was just amazing to catch up with not only Scott and his family, but a lot of the friends that we have mutually made over the years. Um, It's just, it's, dude, it's great. People that you, you know, love and care about, but you kind of lose track Mm -hmm. because you move around so much and you, you know, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but you know, you meet people to take their place. I, you know, I don't know a nice way to say that, but I mean, when you move around as much as we do, you know, you've got a, a, you know, a click, like a group of really close friends, and then you move to another place, and you, the, you cycle the process out. starts over, right? Yeah. yeah, and you still love and care about the last group, but you cannot keep up with them at the same level that you did right. when you saw them weekly. You know. Yep. Uh, so it was really, really nice to to get caught up with so many wonderful, wonderful people. Um, but <laughs> it <didn't> start out. <laughs> the trip did not start out great. Um, well, the well, the trip, like the drive over there, wasn't bad. It was just long. It was like eight plus hours, I think, because of traffic and other other things, just normal travel, whatever. Uh, but when we checked into the hotel. We uh, walked around to the side door where, you know, it was closest to our room. Mm -hmm. And I opened the door and I was holding the door open for Sassian to bring bags in. Mm -hmm. And I I kind of reached around this door and pulled it toward me. My hand grabbed like the, I guess, like the inside of the door, like the, um, I don't know, the inside edge of the door, I Mm -hmm. guess, like where the like where the the latch would be, right? Okay. It's a metal frame door, like an aluminum frame door. And there's this like cutout where you would expect a latch or or something to be, but it was a hollow area <laughs> with sharp edges. <laughs> and of course, since I was reaching from the side, I didn't see any of this. Right. So my hand enters this void in the door frame. That's what she said. Brushing against a sharp edge, of also course. What she that, said. Yeah. So br- <laughs> brushing against the sharp edge startled me. What is the normal human response for a startle? You yank your hand back. Yank your hand back. Slice. Sliced the fuck out of my finger. Uh, for the uh, Twitch or YouTube viewers, uh, hopefully you can see like the almost weak now healed version of this. That's pretty gnarly. Uh, it's pretty gnarly now. Uh, you should have seen it a week ago <laughs> when this happened. But now, now that's your middle finger, right? So you went to this wedding and that, showed everybody. No, it's actually like my my ring finger. Oh, it's that funny. that doesn't pretend well for the for the remarriage. <laughs> but it's on my right hand so even I mean, worse <laughs> yeah, i don't know i don't know but man it was bad like it, i sliced that shit open and it was like i left a bloody trail but to the room see uh, now my question drink- is are we gonna sue i knew that was gonna come up um me being me the answer is no right but we're not talking about you we're talking about us are we gonna sue are we gonna sue? Yeah, like because a, I'm totally, I'm totally in on on the settlement here. I'm trying to convince like, you to sue. Therefore, I I, I get like seventy percent of the settlement. <laughs> so, Ritual Misery <laughs> Productions uh, files lawsuit pertaining to incident on or about December. <laughs> right. Um. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Um. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Let us know if we should sue should this totally uh, sue. unnamed, as yet unnamed. Uh, hotel. It's totally Sue. But yeah, I mean, man, I got to the hotel room. I went directly to the sink to to rinse everything off, and then discover, you know, I so I, I rinsed 
my hand off in mm-hmm. the sink, pulled my hand from the water to look at it, and blood formed like more quickly on the surface <laughs> of my finger than I could see like the extent of the damage. So it took me a while. <laughs> And then once I was done, you know, once the blood started to clot, like it started to slow a little bit, mm-hmm. the sink it's, looked... It, it started to slow because you were running out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe that's why I was getting dizzy. Uh, <laughs> I felt nauseous. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, the sink looked like a crime scene, dude. Like, I hope nobody, like... I don't know. I just I hope Some, no, someone's going I, in there with some luminol. Like, what the fuck happened in this joint? Yeah, like like if a if if a crime actually occurs in there, and a CSI team goes in there and it just, I mean, it's my DNA is everywhere. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Should I sue? Should we sue? It's it's a we, right? Yeah, it's definitely a we. Ritual Misery Productions sue this well, hotel. Uh, let me clarify: it's only a we if you if we win. Uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> if if, there, if we, there's a born legal cost, the, cost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the fees come out of your pocket. All the uh, proceeds go to us. <laughs> oh, it's like it's so, like the best marriage ever. <laughs> so, Amos, you you've done a lot of a lot of road trips across. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And and you've done some Southwest United United States road trips. Mm-hmm. I ten familiar to you, I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a billboard advertising the thing? I say with a question mark at the end because the billboard saying the thing has a question mark at the end. It sounds familiar. Like it sounds like a gimmick that I have seen, but I wouldn't be able to place it directly. So you know how a lot of a lot of like gas stations or or little like little roadside things, right? Will we'll have these you know attractions that they you know just hey come come see the the giant dinosaur or come see the you know giant ball of yarn or mm-hmm. what, whatever it is, right? And it's just a little extra enticement to you know come to my gas station rather than the one up the street, right? right. Deal. Well, that's kind of what this is. It's a roadside attraction. So these billboards pop up like hundreds of miles before the actual exit for uh, this attraction, which is in Dragoon, Arizona. Uh, it's about like halfway between like the Arizona border and Phoenix, more or less. Well, it's probably closer to the to the New Mexico border than it is to Phoenix. But anyway, there'll be an, a billboard advertising like you know cold drinks or souvenirs or whatever but also like pretty much the the same size as that advertisement will be the thing like in a crazy font with a question mark Mm -hmm. and then of course it always adds the exit number so you're thinking all right that's kind of interesting but then like a quarter mile down the road there's another billboard advertising a different aspect of of the the store right and then the thing (laughs) and this goes on dude I don't know how much it costs to put up a billboard in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, (laughs) California. But whatever that cost is, probably multiply that by 400. Jeez. Because these people put up signs. Just it. It's pervasive. So um I. I'm I'm looking at the at the the link that you put in the show notes, and I do remember seeing this several times. Yes, yeah, uh, it it's wild, man. So at, on one of the on the leg of the trip that that Sassian was driving, I actually looked this up on Wikipedia, mm-hmm. and that's actually the link that is in the show notes. So podcast listeners and YouTubers will be able to uh, to check that out. Uh, Basically, just go to uh, Google uh, the thing roadside attraction, and you'll find it. It's the Wikipedia yeah. article. I brought it up, and it's uh, basically it's uh, it's just like mummified remains that someone had found or whatever. It's not interesting. The reason I looked it up is because I knew it was going to be not interesting, and it pissed me off <laughs> that like I was actually curious about it, and to the point where. I almost told Sassy and, hey, like on a goof, like let's stop at this place. 
to see how stupid whatever it is is so I can talk about it on R and B. I almost told her that. And then I was like, nah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna Google it and see what it is. And here you are talking about on R and P anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I talked about it anyway, but I don't know. I'm just I, I'm curious for our listeners either in our Twitch chat at twitch.tv slash ritual misery or um for podcast listeners or whatever if you want to hit us up this is the third time during the show uh twitter at ritual misery um too much calls to action let us know no i'm i'm genuinely curious <laughs> to know what roadside attractions people have seen like what like what it was cool what was a letdown what was just a complete bait and switch because I know, like across America, like the road trip country, there's got to be thousands of these things. Yeah. Well, so you didn't actually stop by and see this in person. So, of all the road trips you've taken, what is the most disappointing uh, roadside attraction that you've um, that you've stumbled across? And then, it, is there one that you've actually went out and sought after and were disappointed in it? thinking back and and all of my road trips in America, I always had a destination that I wanted to get to quickly. And I added to my list of, I'm going to check that out one day. And then never did. (laughs) DJ vision in in the chat room says, uh, largest truck stop in the world on I 80 in Iowa is super disappointing. It's a big truck stop. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what i'm talking I'm about yeah i'm curious what, what you thought it might have been um so I, I i can't think of one that i've just stumbled across that was really disappointing because all the ones that i've stumbled across were kind of cool but i don't remember them so obviously weren't too cool the one that disappointed me the most that i actually went out went to see was four corners Oh, the, uh, wow. What is it? Colorado, Mexico, or, uh, Colorado and Colorado, Arizona, Mexico, New Mexico and Utah. Yeah. 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 I drove out way, way, way out of the way. Like you, there is not a circumstance in which you're going to happen across this monument. Sure. Yeah. Kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's not even like, it's not even in between two locations you're trying to go. Oh, oh, Alamogordo, basically. Kind of, yeah, except fewer people. <laughs> um, it was basically just a big shopping mart of a bunch of Native American souvenirish crap. I'm sure there were some gems in there, but I, I don't, I, that's not my market. It, I would have been better off if I'd showed up and seen, you know, Jimmy out there with a, with a, a VCR catalog, you know? I mean, it would have been more interesting. Um... Yeah, it, the, the the monument itself was cool. Like, is this plate in the ground? You know, you got the little seating. It looks like these, there could have been something awesome, but it's just a bunch of people trying to hawk some random shit, and it costs you like three bucks to get in. Oh, wow. And they don't even have oh, a gas station, God. and it's like nowhere near anything else, so you better have a full tank of gas when you leave. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, yeah, so. Yeah, that sounds like a huge disappointment. Yeah, uh, it was really, really interesting for about 30 seconds about how long it takes you to stretch your legs after driving for a couple hours through freaking nothing. Yeah. So I won't wow. be going there again. <laughs> Check that box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was on my yeah. way to the Grand Canyon and figured I'd stop by Four Corners on the way. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah that's- it's quite a bit out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was it was junk. Um, something I've done quite a few times though. Um, I've played Tetris, and I watched a video on the Tetris World Championships. And I, first of all, did you watch this video? I did, in fact. Okay. Now, before you watched the video, what did you think this video was going to be of? Like, did you think you understood the game of Tetris? I mean, in a in a basic sense. Yeah. So I, I didn't know what to expect, actually, when when I clicked this link, because you just put the generic YouTube link in there mm-hmm. with naming it. 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh God, I'm almost afraid to click it, but, but I clicked it. That's in. what happens at three o'clock in the morning when I'm just pasting shit I want to talk about next week. <laughs> yeah, but no, like I, I thought it was just going to be talking about like the tournament and how the tournament is set up. Mm-hmm. It does that, but it's so much more. It explains how Tetris was programmed and how the, I mean, it, it goes into like Tetris strategy. Uh, I mean, this was a very uh, thorough mini documentary almost. Yes. Like dude's YouTube video, but this is basically like a mini documentary. It's like, what, 25 minutes long, something like that? It's, I think it's a little longer now, but yeah, it essentially starts out with this dude. He's like, uh, I'd never really played Tetris. Someone told me I should try it on the classic system, so I tried it. Yep. And it I liked it, so I have I found out there was a Tetris championship, and I was like, well, I wonder how good I would be. I could go ahead and try my stuff, and after a couple of years, I felt pretty confident that I'd be able to get somewhere with it, and then it breaks it down into like the hyper hyper pressing the buttons and I mean which is something we'd all done like doing a little little twitch thing to where you can you can actually press it more times than your thumb can move because you your wrist can <laughs> shake faster or whatever and like it gets down into frame rates and, and the speeds and and oh my gosh I didn't I yeah I don't know why because I already watched the the documentary it wouldn't be really really a documentary it's kind of like a YouTube explains on the history of Tetris and how it came from Russia and, and kind of spread out everywhere. And I think I talked about that on the show. You did, yeah. And I thought this was like kind of going to be something similar. But it, yeah, no, no. This is <laughs> this is a completely different aspect of it. And holy crap, I thought I knew Tetris. I thought if if someone said, "Hey, uh, you you, how much of Tetris do you know? Nine out of or out uh, uh, out of a hundred, how much? What percentage of Tetris are you familiar familiar with?" Strategy wise, I've been like mm, probably 70, 80 percent. Like, it's, yeah. it's a pretty basic. I mean, there's there's some things, you know, you, with reality. Little, yeah. Reality was more like five. <laughs> no kidding. Like <laughs> this video. So when I'm watching a video and in the first five minutes, it teaches me something more than I knew of a game that I've been playing for 20 something years. I'm hooked. I'm done. I'm watching it to the end. There's no peeling me away from the screen right now. That's what this yeah. thing did. And it was in. The video is actually expertly done. It's really well crafted. It tells a story. You don't know the result of the first question even after the end of the video, which is really frustrating to me. <laughs> well, we need to look up the 2018 tournament results and see if his well, name's in there. I, I, I think the video is actually like in 2016, so I'm not even sure exactly what year it was. Um, but yeah, you'd have to look it up and find out exactly where he placed if you read the comments, apparently he placed in like the top 16 or something like that, or top 30. Oh, wow. um, oh. But yeah, the, it, I, I learned so much about Tetris. If you if you love Tetris, if you even like Tetris, if this is something you're interested in at all, this game, it, it just amazes me how scientifically people can break down these 8-bit games we were playing as like 10-year-olds, man. Yeah, so t two things came to my mind during that uh, YouTube video. One... The Wizard, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, starring uh, uh, one of your kid, uh, <laughs> Ben Savage, <laughs> Fred, Fred, Fred Savage, Savage whatever. Who the fuck is Ben Savage? <laughs> Somebody call Ben Savage. Get a <laughs> ben Savage on the show. If you know a Ben Savage, let us know. Uh, 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 ben is Fred's older brother. That's uh, slow. That's. I mean, is that the acceptable term? I mean. Or do you just mean like he runs slow? <laughs> you know, I'm really getting tired of trying to figure out exactly what the what the what the, what the term is. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, the first thing was the the movie The Wizard. The second thing was I need to find my NES in in the garage and and break it back out because I'm ninety percent sure that I have Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to, I need to qualify for the 2019. <laughs> yeah, it was it, some of the stuff like the the fact that uh, you know it, when you're playing the game, uh, what levels t nine through eighteen are all the same speed or whatever, because the frame rates on the TVs couldn't go fast enough to increase the speed by any measurable mark. 
Yeah. Like, come on, man. That just it really gets into it. It's that was it was really awesome. So all right. Yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, uh, enough of so, my old memories. How about your old memories? Well, so man, I have fond memories of, of watching Transformers as a as a kid. Yeah. Uh, Lucas bought Movie Man Lucas, I'm referring to, bought a new game, Transformers TCG. So it's a trading card game. So think Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever. But Transformers. Mm-hmm. Um, we played it this week, and it's actually really fun. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say one positive thing and one negative thing, and then we can move on from from this. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's a new game. Like it's only it's only been out like a month, so there's not a lot, uh, you know, a lot out there for it yet. Uh, but one really cool mechanism that I'm really surprised that someone hasn't used yet in TCGs is the the Transformers, of course, have two different modes, right? You've got your like robot mode and then your alt mode, which is usually like a car or a truck or something. Mm-hmm. So one side of the card, like, like for the player or the uh, character cards, has the robot mode and then you flip the the thing over and it's the alt mode right and that's like a that's a mechanic in the game is transforming and you'll have different different ability stats or well different stats and um uh, a lot of times not always but a lot of times it'll be a different um uh, abilities and whatnot like you you know you get plus one to defense in this mode or you know or something like that right, right. so i thought that was a really cool mechanic and i i, I like that a lot the negative thing I'm going to say about the game is that it came out with two starter packs, like starter decks, mm-hmm. right? One of them was Autobots. Mm-hmm. The second one, I mean, what would you guess would be the Go- other one that's simultaneously released? GoBots. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you have Autobots, you would expect the, the Decepticons. De- Decepticons, of course. Yeah. No, there is no Decepticon pack. There's the Metroplex pack, which don't get me wrong. Metroplex is pretty fucking badass. It's the fucking city. So really cool. But also he was an Autobot. <laughs> so what? Uh, so Movie Man Lucas, uh, he bought a couple of the the uh, booster packs mm-hmm. also, right? Just to kind of sample it and see see what's out there. The first one that he opened... The character because each pack comes with one character card and then several like like battle cards I think they're called. The character that he got in his first pack was Megatron. <laughs> like, oh, that's fucking awesome! So there are Decepticons, Decepticons in the booster packs. Yes, but you don't have a if you want to play as the Decepticons like you gotta like dump some loot on some booster packs. Um, damn it! So. I don't know. One positive, one negative. I'm really looking forward to where they go with this game, though. I think it's it's got a lot of potential. Mm. Um, it's going to be really cool. But I think they're coming out with a lot of Transformers stuff lately because the promotion hype for Bumblebee is reaching critical mass. I... It comes out this weekend. Dude, I wish we had this movie in the draft. <laughs> I am fucking stoked as hell to see this. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, what does uh, what does Big Voice J have to say about it, though? Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of December 17th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice J. Today, I shot my first turkey. Now I'm not allowed in the Whole Foods anymore. Let's go to the scoreboard. D-Movie parties in last place with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse's $42 million weekend, bringing their total to $146.4 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in fifth place with $217.2 million. Team Vod Squad's in fourth place with $251.4 million. Team Game Night's in third place with $367.4 million. Team Have a Drink is in second place with $416.4 million. And in first place, with Mortal Engine's $9 million weekend, it's Team Ritual Misery with $400. $41.8 $41.8 million. That's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of December 19, 2018. Dude, it still amazes me that outside of one week, which 
just coincidentally happened to be a bye week of ours. We have been in first place this entire game. Yeah, yeah, no, that's um, it, that surprises me as well. Um, I'm glad Mary Poppins didn't do a, a whole lot of uh, action because it, it brought in just a little over four million for the weekend. So that's that's good. I mean, it just came out. Was that wide release or was that narrow release? Um, well, I think it, um, I think it, it might have debuted on a on a few screens, but I'm I'm pretty sure as of yesterday, I think it's in wide release. Mm, okay. So this weekend's gonna be telling for Mary Poppins. This weekend is gonna be rough though, because you got Aquaman and Bumblebee on the same weekend. Like there's yeah. there's five movies coming out this weekend. Aquaman, Bumblebee, Holmes and Watson, Welcome to Marwin, and Second Act. Yep. And the only two movies that are gonna do more than twelve cents <laughs> is Aquaman and Bumblebee. Bumblebee. <laughs> which would scare the shit out of me if they weren't owned by the two teams that are in last place and second to last place. <laughs> we, we might have a chance of skating by through this on the, on the hair of a chinny chin chin, man. We might actually have a, a halfway decent shot of, of, of scoring, yeah. scoring Dude, a win. I, I am super duper disappointed with, with mortal engines debut, <laughs> the paltry $9 million. I am, I, I'm beside myself with, with upset feelings. <laughs> however, however, I predicted from the beginning, go back and listen to the draft. And I said that this movie would be a second week moneymaker because it's got to get the word of mouth. Mm-hmm. A coworker that saw this movie on opening night and he said it was really, really good. That is the only word of mouth advertisement that I have seen or, or received for this movie. And it's so far as 100 percent positive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, really hoping. I, I, I think it's unfortunately, though, I don't think it's going to make as much money as what it could make because being a second week word of mouth money maker, it's going to be overshadowed by by Aquaman and Bumblebee. Yeah. People are going to see that instead of Mortal Engines. So, I mean, uh, right now we have the best value per dollar at nine million dollars per uh, funny money spent uh, with the Stars Born, and we have the second worst with uh, nine hundred and eighty thousand per dollar spent for Mortal Engines. Um, yes. I mean, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and color me disappointed. But yeah, it's gonna be a close game, dude. Like, have a drink has, I think, one more or no? Their movie, their last movie just came out. Mary yep, Poppins. Mary Poppins was their last one. That's their last hurrah. Yep, and that's that's our closest competitor. They're they're right behind us in second place. Yeah. So, Mary Poppins has more legs than Game <laughs> Night has glass, which could be could be a surprise hit, but it's running on limited time because it's only going to have about seven, uh, about five weeks. Yeah, it's so. dude. It's it really it's anybody's game at this point. Like it it really really is. I, I think we could take the whole thing. I think it's also possible we could be like in the last like the bottom half <sighs> of this season. It's gonna be really close, man. We, it's gonna we, be exciting actually to see how this plays out. We need Ralph to stay in theaters for a couple more weeks and milk a little bit more out of Ralph, and then we'll be fine. If we can milk another twenty million out of Ralph over this long weekend we're about to have, we'll be fine. Yeah, and also Aquaman and Bumblebee and Mary Poppins need to bomb. Well, Mary Poppins, I think, is already on its way to bombing. And <laughs> Aquaman versus Bumblebee, I mean, that's the same crowd. That's the same people going for the same crowd. You got um True. You, True. you got Finney, the geeks. The- profits yeah exactly you got the geeks and their ladies going to uh aquaman but then you've got the geeks and their ladies and the kids going to uh bumblebee so well it, not only that spider-man came out last week and if, if people they're you know once a month or once a quarter movie allotment or allowance whatever they're done. They're not going to go see either of those movies. So you're talking about the weekend ads. Yeah, they're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, we'll see. 
Um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Hey, man, uh, I think we're... Wait, no, this is done. This is done. We're back to here. <laughs> yeah, I just want to remind people about this little place <laughs> on the internet called patreon.com slash ritual misery. It's where some of my favorite people uh, go and, and remind me that they like us too. And it makes me like them even more. Um, they give us a little bit of scratch, which mm. inspires us to continue to do this show, have better shows, buy better equipment, improve our processes. Or just, do, just replace the equipment that got destroyed in a 7.0 earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of those things. And also from time to time, we throw some bonuses for our patrons only, whether that's a special interview show um, select uh, things from the archives and uh, extended special. episodes. Don't forget the extended episodes. And extended episodes, absolutely. Uh, there's all kinds of goodness in there. Uh, Amos, wh where should where should people go to support that effort? Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. Or if you're looking for alternate ways to support the show, you can cruise on over to RitualMisery.com/slash Support. Yes, there's lots of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Amazon and PayPal. Lots of neat stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. check it out. But not so many on the rewards on the PayPal, but appreciation is considerably. Well, it's about the same, actually. But you can cruise on by there and do the PayPal thing. We'd appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, dude. Um, have you ever have you ever seen a, a like fat guy? It's got a beard. Um, this reminds me of the Bob and Tom. Where the guy goes to the carnival, but it's actually just a parking lot. And, and one of the attractions is, is the bearded man. <laughs> it's like it's just a guy walking around. <laughs> the four-legged horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like Bill's discount carnival or something like that. <laughs> oh, my God. The four-legged man. Who's ever seen a four-legged horse? <laughs> I, I just recently went digging through the uh, the Bob and Tom archives, uh, the MP3s and stuff that I have, and man, there's some real gold in there. Jeez. Uh, but Jeez. no, I've never seen a bearded man. Well, a bearded. Well, um, yeah, hmm, I'm about to become a bearded man when I retire here in a little bit. And you're already a fat man, so uh, you shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> anyway, play play the other sounder. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kid's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Okay, man. What is your game for me tonight? This week's game is called Bearded Fat Man. Basically, it's questions about our favorite bearded fat man. One Santa Claus. Oh, I thought you were going to say Uncle Willie. Well, I mean, we all love Uncle Willie. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with that. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, chalk that up. Where, where, where's that womp womp at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It helps if I turn this on. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh my god um or actually what i should have played for you and when you said that was uh, um, anyway just in case you're wondering why we don't uh why why you're not listening to night attack right now that's why because <laughs> every time we go off the rails it it just stops it hits the pebbles and just stops <laughs> <laughs> and somebody usually gets hurt you, so i mean it's mostly you finger yeah so anyway, I've just I I put together a few questions okay. about the bearded fat man, and uh -huh. I'm gonna throw them at you. Okay. So the first thing I want to know, mm -hmm. which old world god, mm. so old world god, basically meaning pre Christianity, mm -hmm. pagan gods, you might say, mm -hmm. which old world god predated Santa Claus as the wintertime bringer of gifts? This is a well known old world god. And some um, Santa's wintertime giving was based on this God's efforts. Apollo. 
you are going to say Apollo. And it, it oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to say to you, the god I was looking for was Odin. Odin. Yeah, the, the father of Thor. Odin's son. Mm. Was Odin. Mm. Um, yeah, so Odin used to to ride a, a a flying horse and bring gifts to the children and um yeah the the Santa the Santa myth came after that so all mm. right so the next the second thing that I want to know all right man there was this saint okay a patron saint he was the patron of banking. Mm-hmm. Pawnbroking, mm-hmm. pirating, butchery, sailing, thievery, orphans, royalty, and New York City. <laughs> and also Santa Claus was based on this real life person. <laughs> this is pretty much a gimme. What's his name? Uh, St. Nicholas. <laughs> He's a, uh, a very Saint- round, well, well-rounded fellow. Indeed, and I, I knew this was a, I knew this was a gimme, but because of the the, the, the pleasure was in the question. Yes, exactly the the vast <laughs> list of patronage. Uh, all right, outside the U.S., Santa is often accompanied by a companion mm-hmm. that is responsible for scaring and disciplining bad children. Mm-hmm. Name. One such companion. Is this Krumpus? One more time. Krumpus, Krampus. There you go. Okay. Something right. like that. <laughs> yes, the, Krampus. The, the Krampus German Krampus. guy that, that likes smashing kids in the face. <laughs> yeah, so Krampus is, is, is familiar to bad children all across Western Europe. Um, Germany in particular has a similar figure named Knecht Ruprecht. That um, goes around and and he basically smashes kids with a bag of ashes hmm. if they um, if they don't know how to pray correctly. <laughs> Krampus though, Krampus is the bad one that you don't want to run into because so so Saint Nicholas or or um, you know Zinterklaus or whatever you, you call him in your your country. Uh, if if you're a good kid, he will bring you candy and, and some treats and, you know, maybe even some toys. But if you're a bad kid, then Krampus is going to come get your ass. He's going to throw you in a fucking sack and he's going to carry you off into the woods. And then when he gets you far away, he's going to take you out of that sack and he's going to beat the shit out of you with a with a, a like stick or something <laughs> like he takes this thing out of his out, like off of his his belt and just like just beats your ass um but yeah so so Krampus and connect Ruprecht this sounds more like uh, the result of a fairy tale made up when when some kid went back to school after the holidays with a big old black eye and dad had to explain some shit like oh well Krampus did that yeah (laughs) Yeah, fucking Krampus Krampus is a scary bastard man I I also would have accepted as answers uh, Black Pete or or Schwarz Pete or uh, Bell's Nickel. Um, there, there's yeah, there's probably a couple other versions of, of Santa's companion. But yeah, uh, American kids and like Canadian kids, they don't they don't know anything about all that, which I think is kind of disappointing. No, oh, wow. Um, hey, we just got notified that a an anonymous user is gifting tier one subs to people currently in the chat. So excellent. Well, that's that's pretty amazing. That's downright I awesome. That. That's that is really cool. Thank you so much for doing that. Awesome. All right, Amos. Your What's your next, next question? All right, yeah. question. And you should know the answer to that. I believe you know the answer to this. We'll see. We'll see if you know this. <laughs> Which US state has a town named Santa Claus? Only one? Only one. Now there's there's a second state that has a town named Santa, but there's mm. only one state that has a town named Santa Claus. Mm. And not Santa Claus's village, right? No, it's an actual town with a with a post office, with a a zip code, 
that is for Santa Claus, comma, fill in the blank with the state name. I'm going to have to say Alaska because that just makes sense, but it sounds more like it'd be some like Philadelphia or some or Pennsylvania or some random state in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> Philadelphia or uh, Pennsylvania, exactly how you said it, is a random state in the middle of nowhere. Have you been through there? I have. <laughs> <laughs> Not a random state, nor is it in the middle of nowhere. Look, all the all the roads are s- surrounded by 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 like cliffs on both sides of either trees or dirt. You can't see anything. True, you don't know, yeah. you don't know where the hell you are. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how people got very, from very from, large cities. In it, that state. <laughs> I don't I don't know how people got from New York to Pittsburgh without GPS. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, so is that your answer? Are you? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Alaska because why not? All right, okay, so you're gonna go with Alaska, yeah, rather than rather than going with the correct the correct answer, <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's actually Indiana, and I'm oh. kind of surprised. That you know. Oh, I did know that <laughs> because oh. there used to be there used to be a theme park there named Santa Claus Land. <sighs> yes. They wanted to make it more inclusive and have like the Easter Bunny and shit like that, so they they named it Holiday World. I I think Indiana is the land of the dead amusement parks. <laughs> I mean, not dead. I mean, uh, like look, uh, look, 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 old Indiana <laughs> literally died under our feet while we were there. <laughs> There's also there's also Indiana Beach. Like I'm sure I'm sure people come from from far flung lands. It, but Indiana Beach isn't even a beach. It's like just a bunch I mean, of dirt. It is. It's on, a, it's on Lake Schaefer. <laughs> it's a beach. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows of Lake Schaefer. There's a difference between a beach and a shore. <laughs> As the song goes, to all you fellow Hoosiers out there. There's more than corn in Indiana oh. at Indiana Beach or something like that. I don't remember the second half. Oh, it's at Indiana Beach. There you go. That's it. Oh yes. my gosh. Okay, so still Indiana is the land of the dead uh, amusement parks. That's... <laughs> yeah. So there's more than more than corn in Indiana. There's also Santa Claus, in Indiana, and then the the most naturally growing hemp in the country. Is that still true? I don't know. It was when Paul Harvey told me back in high school. <laughs> it was, yeah, I know. It was the land of ditchweed. <laughs> the ditchweed capital of the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So I only did five questions this week. So your final question. Okay. Give me three alternate names for Santa Claus. Alternate names for Santa Claus. Yeah. A couple um, of them. A couple of them have already been mentioned in this quiz. Right. So. There's like Sunter Claus. There's okay. um, uh, Saint Nick. Okay. And there's um, Bearded Fat Man. Mm. But that's, Keep going. that's the alternate name you gave him right there in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that counts. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. If you if you were to if you were to continue <laughs> naming a fourth, what what might you call him? Um uh, oh there's I mean <sighs> Well, this makes for good radio. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't like I I I I don't my my spite for Santa Claus runs very very deep, so I don't know. And that was the secret uh, right answer. <laughs> Spite. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, Saint uh, Nick, name. Sinterklaas, and Spite. <laughs> <laughs> your, your pronunciation of Zinterklaus is is spot on. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm actually surprised that you didn't come up with Father Christmas or Papa Noel. Oh, uh, you know, whatever. It's all good. You named three. You named three alternate names for Santa Claus. <laughs> so I just wanted to see what you would come up with that. So you got three out of five correct. I think that's probably passing score in a college class so these get degrees exactly so good job <laughs> oh my gosh dude what what else what what else we got for um 
people this week. So this is my least favorite season as far as like holidays and stuff goes. My favorite being um, the run up to uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Because you got like Columbus Day. Well, you, it starts like the end of summer is just, it's classic because you got um, Labor Day, then you got uh, 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 Native American Assassination Day. And then you've got uh, Veterans Day, and then you've got um, Thanksgiving, and it's like all within like 90 days, you've got four major holidays. It's just amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Christmas, I just I just never never really dug it. And what happens is, well, I guess I, I used to back like in early teens and younger maybe. So I I loved that holiday up until I was probably like a I don't know young teen I mm-hmm. guess and then I kind of stopped caring, and then I loved it again when I was a father of young children. Right, right, yeah. Got to play Santa and, and watch the magic as they you know, all, all the stuff right. Mm-hmm. And then it's I'm kind of back in that like, uh, like it's more <laughs> of a hassle than joyful. Yeah. You know? uh, how how long did it take you to get your Christmas shopping done this year? I mean. I don't know. When do you? What, when's the starting line? Like, what? What do you count? What do you count as like the the first thing purchased or the first thing that I clicked? Like, you know, searched on Amazon. Or well, you, I say you can you can measure it in two different ways. You can measure the the time frame between the first item purchased and the last item purchased, or how much, like how many days, the number of days you spent actively looking for something or purchasing something, even if it was only a few minutes of that day. Um, yeah, it's hard to nail down, man, because I, I'm honestly not done purchasing things. Oh, Jesus. So like, I mean, like you have, you have yesterday. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I bought my first, so, so like, all of December. It's basically all of December. Okay. I bought my first gift back in October. It was it was a single item. It was a purchase of um of opportunity because it happened to be something I know that they were wanting and is the right configuration of options. So I got that, put that away. It's been sitting in in, in its hiding place since then. And then I spent one more it day. Where? Huh? <laughs> Don't answer that. I was, no. I was going to try to get you to say where that hiding uh, Well, they probably don't listen, so I could probably tell you, but I'm not going to. Because everybody else's presents are hidden in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, this week on Monday, I went by and I was talking to my wife and I got everything else done on that day. So I spent two days shopping this year and got all my Christmas gifts done. Well, three, yeah. three, because there was, there's one where we made a, uh, we made, we made something to, to mail out to family like months ago because of uh, uh, other circumstances. So those, those, most of those arrived early. Some of them are going to arrive a little late, but yeah. So three days, I spent three days in my Christmas shopping this year. Okay. Most efficient year ever. Cause most of the yeah, stuff that's... came from the same store. <laughs> yeah. No, that dude, that's, that's. Nice when when you can kind of knock it all out at, at once. That's that's yeah, good. Um, it's always nice to have help too. Like when you got like like Santa's helpers. Like, hey, I found this thing. You click it and you're like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, buy now. <laughs> well, the the killer was I went and I got every all I got like all the kids stuff, and then I went somewhere else and got the the last item that I needed to get, and then I came home and me and Amber went out and got the gift for Rick just happened to go to the, to the store where I saw the thing that I thought she would like. So it was like, boom, done. Nice. Right on. Yep. Hey, uh, you know, you know what gets me excited, man? You were talking about the, the, the lead up, the holiday lead up, right? Mm. So like the last quarter of the year, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big time of year for RMP mm-hmm. as well, especially this year. Uh, lots of, lots of, Great things coming up uh, next week. Do you want to announce who our guest is for next week? I mean, mm. long-time listeners of the show should know right. who our guest next week is going to be. Next week, we will have the imitable Richard Gunther for yes. our 
third year, is it third year in a row? Third, third or fourth. Third, third, third or third fourth think year. I think, I think it's third. Third third year in a row, yearly roundup of 2018. Yeah, that's fun. It's always fun to have Richard on, but the, the year-end episode is is particularly poignant. Yeah. It's interesting. It's going to be really awesome. I can't wait <laughs> in, to talk to Richard. And if you haven't seen it before, strap in, folks, because it's usually a long one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's usually it's our be, longest episode of the year. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Right after that, mere days after that, mm. is the New Year's Eve streamathon. Mm -hmm. Which, if you people have, by you people, I mean everyone that hears my voice right now, if you have not, uh, what's the word? Not subscribed, followed. <laughs> if you have not followed the streamathon channel on Twitch, you need to go do that right now. You need to go to twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. Follow that channel. The schedule is posted right now. New graphics are in the works. Literally, as I'm speaking to you live, the, the new graphics are almost finished and are being worked on right now. I hope to swap out the graphics tonight uh -oh. after the show. Uh oh. If not tonight, tomorrow for. Sure. So by the time you watch or listen to this on VOD or podcast, they will be up. I promise you. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. See the new graphics. Click on the schedule. See what we've got lined up. Our, our not our sponsor, Jesus. Our charity this year is Extra Life. Is Extra Life, the Children's Miracle Network, helping sick kids. Um, it is it's a oh. wonderful, wonderful wonderful charity um it's awesome uh just head over there all of the relevant information either is or will be soon posted on yep. twitch.tv slash dc streamathon also ritualmisery.com will have information it might just redirect you to dc uh streamathon on twitch but um the information will be accessible there as well then after the new year's eve streamathon we have another annual tradition. We start the year off with the one, the, the only, only. <laughs> the the queen of Ock, Teon. <laughs> that actually worked out really well. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's gonna be fun. I mean, if you anybody that has seen Tay before, especially Tay on our show, you know, <laughs> you know, it's gonna be yep. fantastic. It's gonna be awesome. And then I think. We may or may not have a bye week after that, but regardless, the very next episode, sometime in the middle of January, is going to be RMP episode 200. Yep. And it's going to be a very special episode. Uh, you're going to want to tune in for that. I don't want to give away too much about it, but it's going to be awesome, and you want to be there for that. That's it for the for the. Announcements other than, oh, speaking of the episode 200, if you want to help contribute to episode 200 in any way, I have a good way for you to do so. And that is to take our audience poll at yellow420.com slash RMP200. It literally takes less than a minute to take the poll. Yep. And you uh, done it already, go do it. Yep. If you've it, done it already, go do it again. Do it again. Do it. I don't care. Yeah. What would what, Shia LaBeouf say? Do it! Just <laughs> do it! <laughs> Which is funny, because what's he done lately? He did it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's, uh, let's get some... Him. It's always interesting. <laughs> let's get some, uh, some music going here. Oh, uh, that's not even music. I don't even know what that is. That's called static. That's, that's called line noise. That's something horrible. Uh, I, I'm going to have to un unfuck this iPad. Uh, <laughs> and that's our, that's, that, that was our cue to, uh, to have already been quiet by now. So we're just going to talk over it. And thank you for listening. Uh, check us out every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash RitualMisery. We want to send our appreciation to... Uh, Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. He's awesome. Go find his stuff and give him credit. I was, th that was where I was hoping you'd come in with the, the last line there, Kent. Like, why don't you... 
Uh, yeah, thanks for listening. For Amos, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Bye! <laughs> Jesus. R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y <laughs> And watch this, watch this, watch this. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> that last singer was really loud. Because <laughs> anything worth doing is worth doing all fuckered up like. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was like simultaneously the worst and the best ending that we've done in a very long time. <laughs>